So moving on to our next topic on mobile automation with APM, we are going to discuss about the APM capabilities. Now, what are these capabilities? We have briefly touched upon this topic, but uh, talking more about this, capabilities is basically the name given to the set of parameters which is used to start an APM session. Now, the information which we provide is used to describe what sort of capabilities which you need uh, in your session. So, for example, this could be a certain mobile operating system which you want to start, or you want a certain version of a device, or you want a specific application. There could be lots of different probabilities or um, the things which you require in your automation session. All of these are uh, defined in your capabilities section. Now, when we start an APM session, our APM client will include this set of capabilities, which we have defined. Uh, now, this is in a JSON uh, format. So these capabilities are basically represented as key value pairs uh, with values um, allowed to be any valid JSON type, including other objects. So once we start a session, APM uh, will examine the capabilities uh, and make sure that it can satisfy them before proceeding to start the session. Once it is able to start the session with all these capabilities, it will return you a session ID, which is like a reference for that particular session, which can be used uh, in later stages. Now, uh, how these capabilities look? So it looks similar to what is defined in this table. So there are some capabilities which are like mandatory capabilities, uh, the two which we have already seen, platform name and automation name. Uh, platform name is the type of platform hosting the app. Um, either it could be a Android or iOS. And automation name, you know, it could be uh, the framework on which this APM um, automation is running. It could be XUI test for iOS, or it could be UI automator for uh, Android, right? So these are the two required um, APM capabilities, which you need to define for every session. Apart from this, there are lots of uh, capabilities, as I mentioned earlier, uh, something like an uh, APM app, uh, which could be the path of the application which you want to start with this particular session, or it could be a app package, or it could be a app uh, activity. There are lots of different capabilities which you can use to start your APM session. Now, these capabilities, um, they could be used in different places. Obviously, when you start an automation, uh, you need to have a open APM session. And there you will need to define these capabilities in your code. The other place where you require this is in your APM inspector, which we have briefly seen. We need to define some capabilities in order to start a session in our APM inspector, where we'll be inspecting different elements in order to run our automation, right? So these are basically two different places where you require these capabilities to be defined. So let's look at one of the instances, which is um, in our APM inspector, when we need to define these capabilities and using these capabilities, we can start an APM session. So let's come back to our APM inspector, right? Um, here we know uh, the host and port might will remain the same. We don't need any path here. Then uh, we need to jump to the capability builder where we have already defined two capabilities, the platform name and automation name. Right, platform name is Android and automation name is UI Automated 2. Now, in addition to this, we are going to add two more capabilities, which will help us to navigate to a particular app package and a particular app activity. In our case, it will be the setting screen on your uh, Android device. So here we will define our first capability, uh, which is the APM app package. Right? So it will define uh, the package for your application. And in our case, it is the default package, uh, which is uh, com.android.settings. And then uh, we'll define another capability, which is APM app activity. Okay, so within the package, we'll open this particular activity, which is com.android dot settings dot settings again okay 
So these are the four capabilities, uh, which is in the JSON representation in key value pairs, and this will be used to open a session. Before we start a session, we need to make sure that our device is up and running. And for that, uh, we need to go to our Android Studio. Okay, so here I uh, will go to our virtual device manager. Here um, I have already created a virtual device emulator and that's named uh, QS Script. Okay, uh, we are going to go and launch this emulator now. And here you will see that uh, Android device is starting up. Okay. And we are going to turn it on and we will go to the home screen. Now, before we go ahead and start the session, one last thing which we need to do is we need to start the APM server. Otherwise, it will not be able to connect here, right? So for that, uh, again, we go back to our terminal and here we type APM and then hit enter and then it will start that server in this particular URL, right? So uh, now we go back to our APM inspector and now we go ahead and start the session. Now it will take a couple of minutes or seconds uh, in order to start the session. Now, once it is able to start the session with the given capabilities, you will see that it will start the APM package or uh, your application on the left-hand side. It will show you a screenshot where you can hover around different elements, right? Now, um, if I want to inspect any particular element, I can go there and I can just click there. It will show me uh, the source of the element in the application, which is the app source. And then um, on the right hand side, it will show me the selected element. Now, there are different uh, element properties which I can select. So it will also give me the selector here, right? So I can go ahead and I can just uh, click here and it will be copied. Now I can go back to my code and I can use this uh, selector to basically identify this element on my package or on my application, right? So this is how you basically um, use APM inspector to inspect different elements. But going back to the capabilities, so this is how you can use different capabilities to start an APM session in your inspector through which then you can go ahead and inspect different elements on the application which you have started using these capabilities. So it's all uh, interconnected. Uh, without the capabilities, you cannot start a session. And until you start a session, you cannot inspect your elements or even you cannot go ahead and uh, do anything on your automation until you have a valid session. And that session is nothing but it is made up of different capabilities. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.